Hey everybody, I'm Gina Perks. I'm here in Des Moines uh, for our AQS Quilt Week, and I want to show you a little um, fun design using a block design divider stencil and a ruler. So let's go ahead and check this out. So I'm going to start with my block and my block design divider stencil. I'm going to use a chalk pounce pad here to transfer the markings. And these markings are just to give me spaces and guides so that I have a more manageable section to work with. This is a ruler that I'm going to be showing you today. It's called Grace. And it is just a wonderful kind of, it almost looks like a tiara. And that's why I named it Grace. I'm going to use a couple pieces of shelf liner underneath the ruler. Without shelf liner, the rulers are just going to slide around. So you want to put a little bit of shelf liner underneath. I usually use two pieces and I'm going to put my opening of the template right here uh, with the ruler foot inside. So you can see that I've got a ruler foot attached, which is a thicker free motion quilting foot. I'm going to show you a little trick here to get your bobbin thread up to the top. So you're going to want to start at the center point and you're going to take the needle down, holding the top thread, then needle up. That's going to grab that bobbin thread. So then I'm just going to take my thread here and just sweep it through. And that brings up the bobbin thread to the top. So now I'm going to go ahead and just put my needle down at the center. The dot is the center of the block. Then I'm going to bring the ruler down so that it is touching the back sides of the ruler foot. And the center registration line of the shape is right here on my stencil line. And this little oval is just here for you to grip to give you a little bit better control on the ruler. So here we go. We're working in free motion quilting mode. And we're gonna go ahead and quilt along the edges of the shape. You don't need to go real fast. You wanna make sure that you're always in control when you're doing this type of work. So now without rotating the fabric, leaving it right where it's at, you're just gonna rotate the ruler. And now we're gonna do this next shape. So you're accessing the different edges of the ruler foot, as you can see, working in free motion quilting mode so your feed dogs are lowered. Take a few extra stitches to make sure you're getting back to the center each time and rotate the ruler again. This is kind of like the days of Spirograph, that little toy that we had. So just follow it along. This is really um, based on your sense of touch. So you can do this with your eyes closed and just rely on that sense of touch. Just going right along the edge. Then when you get back to the center point, you are finished with this portion of the design. You could always bring in another ruler if you wanted a different design in the vertical and horizontal areas, or you can bring in the smaller version of the ruler to do these remaining lines. So I did my corners, now I'm gonna do the top and bottom and sides. So again, place the registration line of the ruler on the registration line of the stencil, and then you're just going to work your way around, just like we did before, only using a smaller shape. So what you're gonna notice is that you're gonna get some secondary designs happening in the center there. And you regulate your own stitch length whenever you're doing ruler quilting. So if you move your ruler really fast, you're gonna get larger stitches, and if you just stay in place, you're gonna get smaller stitches. So it's important to try to keep a good rhythm so that you're moving the fabric at an even speed. Always go back to the center. And you might notice that I am not rotating my fabric at all. Working with a little small piece like I'm doing is easy, but you wanna get in a good habit of not rotating the fabric because when you are working with a larger quilt, that can become um, very labor intensive to rotate a large king size quilt. So just get in the habit of only rotating 
the template. And we'll come back to the center here. And I usually just take a couple small stitches, like so. Bring my needle up, bring my foot up. And then I have my beautiful design. And the markings of the stencil will just be removed with a damp cloth or an iron. So that's my tip for you, and I hope you enjoyed it.